welcome all of you nana here and then in this session uh, we are going to have a look at the inter supplementary transfer orders in a greater depth i have already covered it but uh, even then people are having some doubts and so i would like to cover it in a greater depth along with the picking unit so let's we'll move on and have a look at it what exactly it is inter supplementary transfer orders so if you go on the uh, look at my documentation <clears throat> Uh, I have the patient procurement documentation. You have one uh, min max planning. We have one, uh, not the patient procurement, the patient inventory documentation. There. The patient inventory documentation will be having one, one thing on min max planning. <clears throat> this we have already completed. Min max planning. So here uh, we have seen everything on this. Point. We are not done the min max also. So we have a shop floor sub-inventory, which is very near to the manufacturing area. And then uh, you will not be able to stock a huge amount of material. So whenever the stock gets depleted, we will be replenishing it from the main sub So for which we run the min-max. So once when you run the min-max, it will be uh, basically creating a movement request. And then the movement request, the power of movement request is for allocation. It is going to allocate the material in the main source. So that is the biggest advantage. But sometimes you may not be running the what's called the min max section. <clears throat> you may not be setting min max for each and everything. And then you would like to manually control it. So I want to manually move it from this place <coughs> to this sub inventory. So the preferred method is uh, sub inventory transfers. But the biggest problem in the sub inventory transfer is what it will not allocate anything at all in the source. So let us say I'm now having a lot which is going to expire. And then it is impossible for the people to manually go and then say which lot is going to expire first. Which is going to expand next because you'll be having huge amount of stock there. So if the system guides you in uh, allocating the material, it will be excellent actually. So in such cases, you know, go for what inter sub inventory transfer orders and not sub inventory transfers. Actually. So let us now create a new org and then I will not demo it for the inter sub inventory transfer orders. <laughs> no more there. So first I will now create what a location <clears throat> and then afterwards I will now go there, go for that and then I'll do it. So let me go to the location. I'll create a new location. I've tested this on T01, so I'm not going to test on T02 actually. Whether everything is working properly or not. So manage locations. I go, let me get the new location for testing it. So I did it on T01, so I'm not going to test on T02 actually. Let me go and then create a location. The location is getting created. It's a T01. Oh. So I will now say T02. T02 is going to toss. So that is the location I'm going to make it. I'll take it off it. I will not put on the code, put on the description. The location is not getting created. Go down. And then in the zip code, you put it 1002 on your tabs. Put it in the front. And then please do not change the country because this country works very well actually. This country works very well. United States is the one because the system has been fine tuned for this country, and so leave it as it is. Address. address. So, this is the address address, and then I'm now giving all the mandatory parameters. This much is sufficient for creating a location now. When I go there, click on submit, the location gets created. <clears throat> now, we'll now go on the create our uh, inventory or go there and create inventory or and right click on the duplicate. And we'll create inventory or. Go to this place and then go to the SF or FSM <coughs> functional setup manager from there. We will now go to the generic search area, click on it, and then go to the search, and then I will now go to the managing material. Go to the managing material. <sighs> go there, and click on plus. So I will now say it's the T02 <coughs> underscore Madrasa. And then the organization code is what capital D 021. And then I will now put the units. My tiers one, this is unit. I'm not going to work on the existing uh, uh, what's called the existing structure itself. This one, this is unit the one I'm working on. So the moment I put it, it redwood is coming I'll not change it to zero. Remember the location uh, organization tag is a very important one as far as fusion is concerned. Go there and then put it appropriately. And then once you put it, the PSB is also coming automatically. Thank you for next one. We go inside. And then we are now creating the inventory or <coughs> So once when it is created, we'll be tying it to the location. So operations is the one. Operations is the one. 
which I'm using as a master plan that I will not know the definition of. So is, it, is again operations. Operation is schedule actually. I don't have the habit of putting it at located number because later on you cannot make a change of this no point. The located number cannot be changed once when the transaction started. No point. This much is sufficient for us to begin with on this now. So this is okay, Frank on seven post. And then it does not tie the location to R, and that is a very important one. Frank was that it is not done at that point. It is not query at T zero two. T zero two. Better in. Once select, then click on edit, and then go to the update. You know, performing an update on this. Click on okay. Go there. I will not put my organization T zero two. So the Madras location is not tied to the Madras R. Click on submit, by which this activity is now. Now, for this exercise of transfer order, uh, when you want to move from one of the sub inventory or the main sub inventory into SFSI, uh, the transfer order needs a staging sub inventory also. So the staging need not be physical; it can be logical also. Many companies will not be having a physical staging. So if physical staging is not there, we will not have a logical staging in between these two because that is a must. As because we are going to ship it. So since we are going to ship it, we need a staging. So we need three sub inventories: one of the main, one of the staging, and then one of the SFSI for this one. We will not go to the sub inventories and then locate it. Click on done. So go to the manage sub percentage look up percentage. Then click on. Go to this place and then let us now create a sub inventory. So I will not change the R two. I just completed my uh, testing on T zero one one. So I will delete it. I am not going to make a change. Let us do it. And no data access is required for uh, uh, what I am saying. Creating a sub inventory. Uh, Zero one two T T zero two sorry T zero two one T zero two one one search for it go there no matter so let us now go on and put it and then I will now create this object. So I click on put plus and then I am going to create no point for sub inventory creation data access is not required and then main is the one so take a copy and put it in the description. And then here I will not put the location now since uh, we have already tied the location to be coming automatically. Then what else? I click on save and close now. So the main is now created. I will now go on and get the stage. <coughs> go to the place. I will now go on and get the stage. Click on plus. And then I will now put a stage. Stage is the one and getting created. T02 is the one. You attack to be coming. And then click on save and close, and then we now finally create the SFSI, the shop floor sub inventory. I am going to create now for this test. Then put the location over here, T02. That will be coming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we have completed creating all the three sub inventories. Remember, uh, many places uh, the staging will be logical. You won't be having a physical staging, and all the middle will be available only in the main only. When you do the pick release and pick and form. It will all be remaining there, but as far as system is concerned, they are all available in stage. Click so, on done. Now this is not done. Now we have to go to the since uh, we are now creating an org. Uh, Vision has got a problem now, right? Because uh, Vision's org are already ready-madely uh, kept with uh, your data access actually. But when you create a new one, we have to add everything over there. I click on tools now. Then go to the called security console. I am working on AC importing dot student, so there is no query. And then I've already added this. Let's see, I'm putting. I will go and then show it to you. I've already added. Otherwise, I had to edit and then add the rules. The rules which are required for it is what inventory manager. And then it's for seeing the stock and other activities. Even miscellaneous receipts, everything can be done like this. And then one of the receiving agent. And then afterwards, the warehouse manager is required. <laughs> warehouse manager and shipping manager. So the shipping manager is mainly for pick confirmation, and then warehouse is also supporting that activity. So these are the things which are required as far as role is concerned. If you are creating a new inventory org in Vision, otherwise the OU SCM role will not take care of all the ready-made orgs like zero zero one zero zero two and all. Everything the data access is inbuilt on this role. Whereas when you create your own org, so we had to have the inventory manager, the shipping manager, and the shipping manager, and the warehouse. Then we had to give the data access also. So it is already added. I click on the now point. Will now go on and give the data access for this R. I go to this place, and then here I will now go to the setup and maintenance. <coughs> will now have data access. I click on go there, and then go to the search now point. It's called manage data access for users. 
많은 대략적 설명. 그리고 이거 이제 스티컨 플러스. All the four roles will need the d i r e c t o r s You see, I'm 14. I mean, I have no public way. One more. It is a receiving agent. It is for the gate visit, for the material inventory. And then I will not have zero to one. Is that right? So I will not duplicate it. I go left click on duplicate and duplicating it. Duplicating it. And then I will not duplicate it as what as a inventory manager. Then we. And then put it. This is the additional SaaS compliance and security, which is required actually. So the security model says that uh, if your uh, um, if your uh, application is going to be SaaS compliant, then you need the security. So receiving agent, then shipping manager, and then warehouse agent. So all those things must be done. So we'll not we'll go for the warehouse. No. Warehouse, we won't do it. Then drop it down in the inventory. The T zero two one. The T one plus one. <clears throat> in the shipping, shipping manager. I'm going to do it. Oh God! Some problem has happened. Right? Because everything has gone off. See, I'm putting. I'll now make two two, and then I'll now save it actually. Saving agent. Inventory. And then the T zero to one. Then duplicate it. <clears throat> Inventory manager. Inventory manager. T zero to one. So I will not save. And then the number will remain. So it's not done. Save and close. The record of the combination value already exists. One part has already got saved. I think probably. So go there, cancel it. What is fine? Go to the user one. Or go to the users with red access. Go there. It's a uh, is a SCM fourteen. I now have a search for it. So three of them might have got entered actually. It's not having anything. Document D zero one one eight zero show me. Four or three new. They're not showing anything new at all. I don't know why it's saying like. This. Plus one. Otherwise, you know, cancel done, and then come out of it, and then again re-query it. Only for the T zero one one is there. T zero one two is not there actually. We are seeing fourteen. Is a receiving agent. Zero two one. Let me see when see whether it is accepting down. It is accepted. Some issue I don't know. Let's see, I'm putting the you know the remaining three in one go now in the inventory. So the inventory is the T zero two one. Duplicate it. It takes a long time to duplicate. I don't know, sir. So inventory is not done. I'm not put the barrels. One <clears throat> place, and then I'm not putting zero two. I will not save it now. But I will now have to open only one more now. So you see, I'm putting is a shipping. So security is a must. These four are the ones which are required for the inventory for all your activities. Seven plus. Now we'll now have a look at it. Go to this place. Users with data access and then query was. I must have eight now. Because also we now have eight. So go there. So zero to one, <laughs> zero to one, zero to one, zero to one. Okay, everything is other. So these are the four ones. The inventory manager, receiving agent, and then shipping manager, and warehouse manager are required. Fine. As far as uh, supply chain is concerned, fine. It's all done. It's all done. <clears throat> so we are given this. Now, uh, when you want to move from one place to other place, we have to have the inter-subinventory transfer orders as we done. We will now create the inter-subinventory transfer order. Inter-percentage, sub-percentage. So inter-subinventory transfer order parameters must be set. So manage inter-subinventory parameters and then click on plus one. So organization is at T zero two one, and then the destination type is going to be inventory. And destination subinventory is a surface site. 
uh, the source of inventory, you can even have it as main or uh, then it will pick up only from main actually. Otherwise, we can even keep it as off. If you're going to have the material at many, many places and then if you want to allocate, if an item is available in multiple places, we can even keep it as off. So the picking rule will now appropriately allocate. That would be an excellent one. And picking rule, allocating it from many, many places into the SFSI is beautiful. Now. And if you have multiple, you can keep it as off. Go to the place and then make it the in-transit and then the reserve protein is started. That's okay. So the inter-submitability parameters are all set. Now, right? So the transfer order, the power of transfer order is allocation. Actually, and that you're going to see. Now, right? Because it's closed. That's not allowed. And then uh, the inventory speaking rule is what normally absolute last in first order. Whatever has come latest that will be coming into that what's called will be picked up and that will be allocated. So we are going to override it. So the latest one will be allocated that is absolute last in first order. So we will now create our own uh, what's called uh, the picking rule. Fine with that. So the main problem with the many industries is what lot expiry. So whatever is expiring has to be given to the manufacturing and then done to the manufacturing. So we will now create an item which is going to have a lot expiry. So, so this is not done. And then we'll have to have one more thing. The receiving parameter has to be set up. So we'll know how to go and manage receiving parameter. Manage receiving parameter the one. So you will now make it one. Over receipt tolerance, I'm now making it as an end. Receipt routing is standard. All the mandatory fields only I'm doing it because we have already covered everything on the uh, receiving part now. So I will not again repeat everything. Numeric, and then I will not say six thousand is my number. That's it. And then I will not have RMA as a standard number. That's it. Fine. So only the mandatory fields. I'm not. We already discussed everything on all of the parameters of the receiving area. Fine. So that's what is the T 0 to one is the one. Fine. Can say it close. The receiving parameters also set. Now it needs a shipping parameter also because when you are picking it up, when you want to do the pick release and pick confirm, we have to stage it. That is explained on the pick, pick, uh, picking, picking, uh, shipping parameters. Basically, so I will not, I will not do it afterwards. Afterwards, I will not do it. <clears throat> so if you don't provide the shipping parameters, it will not even pick at all because it doesn't know what where to put it. The stage subordinate is not noticeable. So when I get an error afterwards, I will not set it up. And uh, uh, that is a shipping parameter error. And then one more thing on the item is also required. One more thing on the item is also required. I will not create an item. You will get an item. So keep on this one, look at an item. <clears throat> so item is what you go there, go to the space, and then it will not create the item. You go to the product management and then go to the product information management, and then we'll be creating an item now. So inter-sub inventory transfer order is the one which I'm creating it actually. So for which I will now go there, click on it, create an item. And since we, I'm working on the missions R, I will be choosing 000 as the R, as the master. Then I'm getting set. Everything is coming from it. <clears throat> I will not populate the item name. <clears throat> so apply the template and then go there. I will not say is it E02 underscore E store. Intersubmitted transfer order. Go there, go to the place, and then go to the specifications. When the min max is now creating a transfer order, so this particular attribute is not required at all. Go to the sales and order manual. You see, they are now having what? You see this. The inter internally transfer orderable, then it will not look at these two attributes at all. Internally transfer order, then inter inter transfer order enabled, it will not look at all. But when you make a manual transfer order, they must be yes. So I will now make it as no and then show it to you. I will now make it as no. And then afterwards, let's go and not Now it's not no. So this is required for making a manual transfer order, but not for the automatic transfer order. Automatic transfer order will not look at the value of the attribute at all. Only whereas manual will not look at it. So go to the association. No, no, we are not simulating an error actually. So go to the actions and then go to self map. And then it is assigned it to the organization. T02 entering now. So this item is now getting assigned. So we are not testing this now. Now give a save and close. This store is ready. <clears throat> now I am now going to define my picking rule. I am now going to define the picking rule. So we can define the picking rule as per the real requirement. Actually. In this case, what happens? I am not. Once again, I have made a mistake again. So I will have to enable the item for what? What are the manage items? And then I will know 
to query was item on stop i made one mistake here <clears throat> i have to enable that lot control with the expiry control so go there manage items uh go back to the p02 ready so one the having matter one so i go to the org level and do it okay to the mask level org level i will now modify the attribute on this one click on it and now modify the attributes this one go to space and then i go to the specifications <clears throat> and then i go to the inventory so here <coughs> go there i will now make lot control as a full control with the expiry go there is a full control and somebody has made it as a org level this is a master level actually so we we'll have to that is a wrong one okay no? that's all speak everything should be in fact what happened this is a control to be done on the mask level i will now the starting prefix number i will say lot underscore i will say one more something i'm doing so this has to be changed i will now go to the org level and then make a change i mean what i mean uh, i'm i'm in um, an org only so i had to go to the master and then make a change and the control level has to be changed is at least accepting it here now so click on second close and then the expiry i know open up in the master and then so open up the master <coughs> go there put this place and then you go to the specifications now people are playing around on the attribute control level actually so we can't do anything at all <coughs> go there go ahead so no control this has to be made as a full control then only this will be eligible for it. i will now make it as what user defined expiration date and then i will now say lot and so one not i'm not going to use this i'm not going to use my own lots now i'm not going to use this uh, prefixes and things so now lot control with the user defined expiration is the one click on second post now let us go there and then create our picking rule for so find the lot control data find with this one for that you want i will not go there go to the place and then click on that scroll over there we will now go to the sf for some area and then from there we will now go to the generic search now click on it now go to the generic search search and then yeah, i know what the manage picking rules so we are going to perform that picking rule and like point let us now create a picking rule so let us see from first one i already created a t01 picking rule so i am now going to create a t02 picking rule and then there are multiple priorities available here. so as per the end end customers requirement we are going to now i am not going to use a expiry lot first expiry first one which one is going to expire first it is going to allocate first that the very uh, very logical one other than it is very much desired by many many companies actually and then you can even have a multiple uh, multiple priorities for a sub sort sub sort sub sort like very powerful in it it is exactly equal to what we have in evs right? there is no change at all i will not allow partial picking also i'll not it fine because when, whenever you want something it will not pick uh, two two lots also No, we're not enforcing. Some companies will be asking you to enforce other time. Whatever you're doing it, otherwise, whatever they're not enforcing. Make it as active. So that's it. So we are having this part. So we are now creating our picking rule now. Take over the description also. You can even go on the shelf life days of picking also. That's also another possibility. So that's it. Fine. Go there. Our picking rule is ready with that. Lot first expiry first. Fine. Two months ago, close now. We are going to assign it to our. Go there. Two months. We are going to assign it to our. <coughs> so this will be done. by us <coughs> so we're going to assign it so i keep your cursor on this place and, then, and again it can be anywhere i click on the manage assignments and then i'm going to assign it to our org so click on plus now and now do it so go there is a t02 <coughs> and then you attach the organization will be coming automatically the sequence is one now right? the picking rule is a t02 and then you attach it will be coming and then the criteria i'm not going to give a transfer order my item type is going to be a transfer order so drop it down the plenty of items are coming uh no the transaction source type so no, no, no. transaction source type is a transfer order actually i will not make it as a what the transaction source is is a transfer order so this will be applicable only for transfer order nothing else so you can have for different different transaction sources we can even have a different different uh, uh, assignments actually fine uh, different assignments for a different picking rule i have given it was that right, one i will not make it as active and that's it the assignment is now complete so whatever is going to expire first will be allocated click on save and close now what i'm going to do is i'm not going to have what a stock we will have a stock rule as per the plan actually we will that what now we'll now make a stock fine go to the home icon and then go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management so go to the supply chain execution then go to the inventory management and then it has now have the stock rules okay fine go that component we will now create what fine go to the create I mean, miscellaneous transaction we have given the red access and so it is easily possible for us to change the or now So the org is zero to one. We'll check and we're not now coming. Go there. Click on the miscellaneous report. 
I will now populate an account finds over there. This will be given by that Moscow, the financial team now. So they will now give you for a million. What is the account yet? You know, I am not choosing some account. It's okay. <clears throat> so drop it down and then make it this. Item cost we have completely covered actually. Fine costing and all. So right from uh, basic to advanced, it will come plus. Two. I will now populate my item. We have got only one item as is R. So if you give a percentage, it will be coming automatically. You give a percentage, and then you have the item will be coming automatically. Because multiple items you have to give a reduce the criteria. So give a percentage, and then you have to Sub inventory will not go there, will not keep it on main. Main, nothing on it. Now, I'm not going to have a lot which is going to expire soon. Actually, I'm not going to have a lot. I will not say uh, first lot as input. If you put the transaction quantity and then put a lot, the transaction quantity will not go away. I will not put one, not three because I will use one, not one, one, not two. Lots are normally unique across organizations and so on. Whatever I'm noticing on a different lot, actually, one, not three, and one, not four. And then if you give a tap, the quantity will go away. The quantity will go away. So we had again give the quantity. 30 is the one I'm doing it. So lot first and then quantity next. Actually. So that way it has been. <clears throat> What's coming? The value provided for the expiration. Yeah. I have to give the expiration date also and then afterwards only give the quantity. That's what it's saying. I'm fine, that's not. So I'm not giving what happens is the second one. It is not going to expire on sixth actually. And then only you have to give lot expiration date and then afterwards only the quantity. That's what it's saying. So it is expiring immediately as a six on to the end expiring. 30 quantities are expiring on six actually. Click on okay. I will now add one more line. I will not take out of it. I will now add one more line, which is going, which is the lot is going to expire on what was the 10th. So click on plus. I'll be putting the lot and go there. So the next line I'm going to wait for. So the second line will be the same item on the same sub-inventory, but a lot of 104, which is expiring on what? On 10th. The main we can even keep it in different sub-inventories, then system will be allocating also excellently. I will now go for another day, 10 quantities. Now I will now go for 20 quantities. I'm not going to request for 41 quantities. You can now see the 30 will be uh, emptied first, and then afterwards only the 11 will be taken. But by default, if you don't assign a picking rule, it is absolute last and first out. Fine, let me it come now. Fine. So uh, we are now uh, having our own picking rule. I will now go to the what? Go there. Go to the edit details. <clears throat> the edit details. I will now go there. Give this one not four. So lot number is one not four. And then I will now immediately give the expiration date. So one not three was expiring on sixth, and then I will now make the expiration to happen on what? Tenth of uh, uh, September actually. So give it a So go there. So we'll have to give this. One. So the 20 should not be given at all. We remove the 20. <clears throat> we should give only after the lot expiration date is completed, then only have to give the 20. <coughs> <coughs> the lot has to come now. <clears throat> so expiration date is coming back or not. I will not make it as what? 20th. 10th. So first lot 103 is expiring on 6th and this lot is going to expire on 10th. So click on it. Go there. I will not make it as 10th. Now I'll give 20 quantities over That's it. So sixth, which is expiring, will be automatically allocated. Okay. The 30 quantities, and then the balance will be taken from one not four. So expiry control is an excellent one. And then that is very much desired in a company. So many, many people will be working on lot expiry. Externally, the pharmaceutical industries uh, and other things where uh, and the edible uh, industries, I mean, they also will be having a lot of uh, what happens, uh, concentration of the expiry. Because the butter will be expiring very soon. And then the milk will be expiring soon. So those things will be coming up in the edible industry. So they have to know the expiry. So click on OK. And then we'll now make a performance of this. Company. We'll now make a transaction on this. Company. So both the things have been given now. The lot has been given. So let us now go and then commit it. <coughs> so save it. Then everything will be coming into the system. The system has suddenly become slow, actually. <coughs> so. <coughs> And remember, we are not given the shipping parameters at all. So while you're picking it, it will not pick at all. When you want to pick, it will not pick because it doesn't know where to put. So picking is going to fail actually. The picking will be ultimately failing. So we'll know how I'll put it on this one. So go there. I will not give the 20 quantities because it has not been given there. Fine, go there. No, no given. So click on submit and then it will be transactional going on. The value provided for the expiration we do got for from. We only given this value. Click on any details. You're given the expiry date as well. Click on it. So, God, the expiry date has not got registered because of which it's not coming. 
So tenth of this thing, I'm not giving it to them. Then the 20 quantities will go away. So once you give expiration date, they are given it. But some other it didn't got to just watch it. So the lot along with the expiration date has to be given. And then only we have to go ahead on this. <clears throat> One expiration date is meant to go there. The long put the quantity as 20 now. That's it. And then click on OK. And then we come over here now. Right. The lot and the expiration date are there, there, there. So go there and go to the main screen. And then from that, we will now perform that. The completion of this. So everything is there. If I click on submit by which the transaction gets completed. And now all the basic setups have been done. Fine. Two problems which you have created. One is that the item attribute has not been properly set, and then the shipping parameter has also not been set. So because of it, not through there in the appropriate place, we'll have a look at it about how it's coming up. So you can see the transaction completed. We'll now go on the load and login. Sign out and sign in. Because any major setups you have done, you better sign on that. We'll come inside and then we'll uh, create a manual transfer order for us. You're going to get a manual transfer order. So I go there, go to this place, and then I go to the what's called your supply chain execution, and then I go to the inventory management, I will now create a manual transfer order for us. Click on it. I will now go to the what's called manage item quantities for this one. The organization change the organization to your T0, T2, T0, T2, T1, T1. Okay. You are changing the organization. And then I am now going to create a manual transfer. So I will now go to the action. I did not have to query at all. Fine. If you query it, it will not show the stock actually. It will not show the stock. And then I will now request a manual transfer order. So while you're doing it, you have to say which is your destination supplementary, and then what is your R. So you know, requesting a transfer order. So we'll go there, and then we'll go to the actions, and then go to what request transfer order. We are now requesting a transfer. Order. And since we are running the item, the item will be getting populated automatically over there. It is coming from there. I will now request for forty-one quantities. Forty-one. Just I will now say when you will be need. I will now say you need on fifteen. And then click on the supply details. Here it will not populate at all. This is the problem. When you go there, the supply details will not be populated at all. Because the, the internally transferable in the transfer order enabled is not on. So here you will not be getting the org at all in this place. So that is required for a manual transfer order. Go there. So destination sub inventory is the SFSI. SFSI. And then the source organization will not come at all. You go there and make a search, you won't get it at all. That has not been done at all. Right? So that two attributes are responsible for the source organization now. Source organization will not be coming at all. If you give a search, it will not come at all. Even if you give the organization name as what T02 and then make a search, it will not come at all. So what we do is we will not change the what's called as the control. The attributes we are going to make a change. I will not give a cancel. Cancel and then right click and then duplicate. Then we will duplicate it. And then now go to the first call. You the same. Then go to this place. You go to the first call product management and then go to the product information management. And then let us now query the item and then the org level we are going to make a change as per the attributes of So go to this place and then query via browse items. I am now going to query my item now. Go there, click on it, and then you know the browse items and then query the item. <coughs> Go to the browse items. Let me query my item. And then I will not change this thing. The internal uh, transfers to be enabled actually. And that is required for a manual transfer order. Okay, you go there, T02 underscore is two. More than make a search. I will now go to the org level and then I will now make it. <laughs> the bottom one is the org level. Click on the hyperlink on the item and then go there and then go to the specifications and then we will now make a change of that. It is on the sales and order management. So go to the sales and order management and then here we are going to make a change. 
So I will not make it as what? Yes. Now the or will come. I will click on save and close. Now. So we have made internally transferable enabled and this is required for a transfer of it. Save and close. It is now getting done. So once it is done, we will go over there and then query for the or. So here the screen is already locked. We will not see whether it comes or not. Otherwise, I have to again make a request and so if it comes, it's okay. Otherwise, I will not drop it down and then I will not make a search. If I search, it has to come. Yeah, it's coming. <coughs> Previously, it was not coming from there. So after having made this, it's not coming. And then uh, it's not a, leave the source blank. That is the power of allocation of a uh, movement request actually. And click on okay. And that's it. And then click on survey. You are submitting it now. So the transfer order is now getting created actually. So it takes some time for the system to sense this now. So if you go there, go to this place, and then if you go to this place, and then I will now go to the home icon, <clears throat> I will now go to the inventory management. So go to the supply chain execution and inventory management. <clears throat> and then if you go on and query your transfer order, it has to show. This is for 41 quantities. Go there, click on it. I will now go to the manage transfer orders. It takes some time for the system to appear. Is the T02 the one in the one? I'm going to have to search. So it takes some time to come now. In the meantime, what happens now? Go to the home icon here. <coughs> and then in this place, I will now go to the shipping now. And then I will now create one more tab region also to have a look at it. Once you click on it, it has to come up here. It will not but I will remove up to calm and then it will not go into the remove. And then right click and then duplicate also. One more thing on duplicate. And then one more also in the duplicate. So we have multiple screens for us to work upon now. <laughs> I'm getting it. Now here go that we will now go to the supply chain in the inventory management and then here we will now query for the transfer order. And if you go there, but by this time the transfer order made up on you see. <clears throat> so 41 quantities transfer order has been created manually with a request now. It takes some time to come out here. It's still not come out. No place. And that is also done. And you also done. And then I will make one more target also. So in this place, I will now go to the what's called shipping execution. We will now go to the shipping, go to the inventory, and then we will now go to the shipping, and then we have to query for it actually. And it has for us to click on search. So the 51 quantities, so 41 quantities of transfer order has to come over here now. I think I submitted it, not right? It takes some time. Really, very horrible. Right? Taking a longer time, actually. Let us go the, and then we will know how what you go to the what's called manage uh, transfer orders. Right? Again, go on and query. So, T02 to 1 the 1, and then make a search. Now. <clears throat> yeah, this time we got it. So, 41 quantities. And then if you click on the view shipments and the zips, it says that what uh, it is now requested, but nothing has been shipped. Right. Now I will not take up 136051 is that we go there, go to this place, then go to the shipments, 136051. I will not try to launch the big release. Go to the shipments. Go to the shipments. And then go to the managed shipment lines. It is 136051 in the one. So go there. 136051 in the one. Click on search. Once when you search for it. It will now say it will not be possible for us to launch the big list because the place of staging is not mentioned on the on the, on the parameter shipping parameters. So if you search for it, it will take some time and then we'll be coming over here. <clears throat> so we have to what happens there, do this. We will now go to the interest of inventory transfer or rather the managed shipping parameter is the one which has been set. What is that? And then we will now uh, set up the shipping parameters for us. And then you know, go to the generic search area and then go to the manage shipping parameters. We go there and then open it for our 02, T021R for the raw data set. That is it. So click on it. And then if you go to the management lines, 
it is still working on them. You can search it as to search and show it to me. Sometimes what happens is this is the problem. You make it as what before and then do it longer. Before whatever you want. If you want it on 15th, I'll not put it. Whatever has to be shipped before 30th, I'm not going to make a search. So sometimes it's very sensitive actually. So this is an unnecessary column they have introduced. It is not required at all. What to go that to one. So it is on 0 to 1 now. Right? To go there. The ship confirmation rule, I will now make it as an auto ship. Auto ship. And then here, weight is weight. Volume is volume. Weight is weight, volume is volume. Okay, go there. And then the ship set behavior is going to be information. And the remaining are auto, auto created. Go there. And then I will now use the ready made ones now. Find all standard orders. And then here, the PSGR is going to be order number. We have, we have already seen all those things now. Right? How it is all created and then how it is going to go. Here, the staging sub unit is a must. So, if you don't have a staging, it will not work at all. And then I will not enforce the shipping method. So, before I save, I will not show you the error and then I first save. What is this place here? Then I go to the actions and then go to pick release. Then I pick release, it will not even touch at all because it will be still ready to release. It's not even touch. It will not say that. Whatever the concurrent has been launched, right? The, 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 the request is what? Uh, 902 is ending now. What? I will not go to the, go to the place and then I will not right click and then duplicate. Mm -hmm. Go to the place, manage transport of that. The managing model. So we know how we look at our concurrent actually. Thank you, madam. Now go to the place. Okay. So go to the place and then here. I will now go to the supply chain regulation, go to the inventory management, and then now look at the concurrent. And not sorry, I'm sorry. You have to go to the concurrent and work on it. I will now go to the tools. 902 is the concurrent and go to the tools. <clears throat> and then I will now go to the schedule to process and then have a look at the 902. So the launch pick release has been done now. So it says what? Trying, trying, trying. It is not even working at all. Release pick is trying. That means what? It is unable to do. Because the staging sub inventory is not going to work. So that is the reason that what happens now giving a try. And even if you give a save and close also, what happens? Nothing will happen. Now let us now go there and then save it. So the shipping parameters are fully set. Right? So let us now go and then save and close. Now if I launch, it will not have any problem at all. So what is the management parameters? I will now again launch it now. I'm going to the actions and I will now launch the pick release again. This time it will not have any issue at all. So 903 is now submitted. Thank you very much, monitor. Now have a look at the 903. I will now go to the monitor process and then query for it. The retrying will not happen. 903 will be getting completed. Mainly really because the, the where exactly at the stage is not done. Fine. The pick release and pick confirmation is going to stage the product and then there was not that fine. Now it has got completed. Now, once it is completed, we will now go on and ship it actually. And then, uh, if you go to the manage transfer orders, the shipment number would have been created here. Now, click on that now and then come out of it and then requery it. So, click on the view shipments. Now, you can see the shipment number is created. There is no open status actually. There is no open status. So, the shipment number is created and then this is an open status actually. <coughs> so, go there. Uh, so, now I will now ship it now. Fine. Once when you ship it, the same shipment advice concurrent will be running and for the management shipments and I will now give a save and close now. But the shipment number is already created. You can now see the shipment number is what? Uh, if you go to the manage transfer orders, it is 70196 is the one. So here in space, you go there. We will now close it and then you can now see this. That I am going to perform a ship confirmation. <coughs> so 7016. So it has got two lines of 30 and 41. And we will now have a look at what happens at the allocation actually. Now look at the location. Take it over the moment request and then have a look at the location, how it is allocated. So go to the monitor process and then shade in new process. I will now say print move. I'm going to make a look at it and then see how the allocation has happened. So the lot which is expiring first has to be allocated first. That is the, that is the plan actually. And the print move is the one in your tab. So we'll now see the allocation. So print move is the one. So that will be allocating the item. Actually. Print moment request, pick slip report is the one. It's going to run now. So we will now allocate this, or it would have, I will not release it, I will not run it without allocation because the allocation is already completed. So let it run. In the meantime, whatever they go there, we will not whatever they complete the ship. That's not taking a longer time to come now. So go there. We will not do a what's called a ship confirmation of the product. So once we will ship, I will not ship it. So now 
there is no running country mode again the send shipment advice will be responsible for interfacing it to the what's called the destination submit to the actual so if you go that one it was print moment request mind go that one okay now i'm not running it so the organization is at t 021 go there and then if you drop down the moment request it will be coming automatically there is one more moment request in there so take it over it and then i put on this place here i am not going to allocate it all because allocation is already completed so release approved lines is null lecture and then take on some we are only going to look at the allocation lecture whatever that i just printing it only so now the ship confirmation is also come the send shipment advice will be responsible for interfacing it to the destination the destination submit it send shipment will be it has already succeeded so since it has succeeded if you go to the manage transfer orders and then if you give it done now you can now see the receive expected ship will be coming and then the ship to also will be coming. when it is going to be expected we expected on 15th actually fine it will also say the same thing and click on done now and come away and then click on the view shipment it is and the results you can now see it is expected on 15th actually so the people wanted only on 15th and then it is now already shipped back so the line is closed and that is go there so this is done by the send shipment advice sometimes what happens the send shipment advice is not running properly so if this fails what you can do is you can go there and then there is a super concurrent available here fine it is a managed shipment interface if that fails you can run it up and this will definitely uh, interface it to your destination actually at the moment you know you run with a minimal parameter for fine mode is all and then it is asking for the organization fine whether it is at t 0 2 1 and then go there and then submit it. so i'm not submitting it because i it is not fail for me if it fails you run it this will now invoke all the pending ssd ssa you know fine all the ssas which are pending or which has not done the job that it doing so it's a super concurrent for the shipping area manager can interface the one but it will interface it to the destination so it's not so we are not on it so print moment request pixel to port or completed by this one so now that we'll know how to look at the output we'll know how to look at the output this place so output yeah report can be republished actually so click on the republish i will not how to look at it click on it go that export to pdf pdf and click on show all and then not open it you can also now you can see the lot 103 which is going to expire on 6th has been fully allocated we got the record is and then the balance has been allocated from lot 104 and 11 points so the how the picking rule is now so we can fine tune our picking to suit the in customers requirement actually you know that we can very well fine tune it so when you want to pick there are plenty of uh, options are available here so you can even have a sort sub sort sub sort by which also we can do a lot so allocation is the real power of home order and then that is achieved by this man manual transfer order right so that is where it comes from you know allocate and then is not shipped now if you go on and have a look at the stock you know go on and have a look at the stock so the stock will be depleted but it is not incremented at all the stock is so the stock depletion takes place along with the send shipment advisory the stock is now getting depleted so go to the supply chain execution and have a look at the inventory manager so 41 quantities have gone out of 50 it has now gone away from our inventory it is going to place go to the inventory so uh, the send shipment advice is responsible for what two activities actually the send shipment advice is responsible to advise one is what depleting the inventory and then re relieving the reservation fine reservation also gets relieved by this concurrent action there is a very important concurrent was one if it doesn't run i say that managed shipment interface will definitely Uh, invoke all the pending ones and then it will now complete everything. So the super concurrent is a beautiful one. So it's not a, so here if you go and then see our stock, manage item count is and then because of that we have our only. So it will now show a stock of nine only. Forty one has got left the source but it has not reached the destination at all. The destination is apparently the thing is not there. The main we have nine actually. So it's apparently. The main it is lot one not four has got one not three is already allocated. In the lot one not four we have got only nine. So let us now go there, go to the destination, then receive it. In the place, we now receive it. So we are going to receive it. So the stock has come down; it has got depleted. The reservation also is getting relieved. Actually, I will now go to the what's called. I will now go to the receipts and then perform another. So receive expected shipments or one and go to perform it. So go there. So the transfer order number. If you don't know what I am saying, go there, drop it down and make a search. No point. No search. It will not show you. No search. It will be showing you the transfer order number. Otherwise, you know, uh, say one three six zero five something like that. I don't, I don't remember it now. So go there. I'll not show you. One three six. Then put three characters and then make a search. And then click on search now. Now we're going to make a gate result. 
So once when the gate result is come, it will now say, I now select both. Select both and then click on result. The gate result is now getting completed. Go there. And then I will now click on the show result quantity. It will not show you how much is expected from both the places in the 30 and 41. So click on create result. The GRN number of uh, starting on 6000 or something like that will be created. Now. Like that. We can even give the packing slip number 123. And then the shipping method, you can even populate to find out that. Uh, if you have it, otherwise, whatever the limit for that point. This is an excellent value addition to your shipping actually. So that point, you know, that later on, when you take a report, uh, blah blah blah, you, know, you can even take a report and then you can now see but what exactly has happened on the shipment side. Right? So we can always insist upon the uh, receiving people who are sitting at the gate to maximum populate all this information, even though nothing is mandatory. But if they give it, it will be a very excellent one for the management to understand and then analyze also who has performed the result. Everything will be coming over. So click on something now. So by with GRN gets created. So 6,000 was the GRN number. And if you go to the managed item quantities now, so the managed item quantities. <coughs> Where are the managed item quantities? Managing quantities. Now, come on. Managing quantities. Now, if you go and then query, it will say, well, go to this place. And then you know, include the receiving also and then inbound also. And click on search. No, man. search. You must enter the value for the item. Come on here. <coughs> Item is what? The T02 and then we would have ISTO is the item. And then everything make a search. So once you make a search, I'll show you. So you can now see 41 is lying in the what's called the receiving area. Nine is the actual stock. So it'll now come over here. No, 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 do the put away for the 41. And once you put away, it'll now see it'll now be coming into the staging subunitary, that is the destination subunitary. Go to the space, go to the receiving area. So 6000 is the DR number. I'm going to make it. I will not perform a receipt. We will not perform a put away. Put away receipts of this now. 6000 was the GRN number. You query on the GRN number. It is customary in our company to always query on the GRN number and not on the any other number. Transfer order number or purchase order number is highly prohibited. Rather, it is highly instructed not to query on anything because one transfer order may even have multiple GRNs. So the goods receipt note is the one by which whatever you are supposed to query and then go there. I will not select both the lines and then click on put away. But I have not specified the lot number now. Right? Lot number is not specified. And so if you click on submit, it will be failing. So thank you. I will say lot number is required. You must enter the serial or lot number. That is required. Number. So otherwise, whatever. So select the first line. Select the first line and then go to actions and then you go to what record lot and serial numbers. So click on plus now. Right? We have forgotten the lot, doesn't matter. Right? Drop it down and then choose it. So click on search. And then it will not show you what is the lot which is available for this now. Right? For this transaction, it has come along with it. When the source, it has come now. Right? So we are now allocating the lot. Yes. Supplier lot also can be populated over here. So the supplier is specific. It is not a supplier. It is actually internal only. But the supplier lot also can be populated over here if it is coming from supplier. So click on edit now. Second line also we go there. There is a 104. And then we go there. <coughs> Cancel. Oh, I'm sorry. We go there. Click on it. I will now go to the actions and then go to what record lot serial numbers. So click on it. This is for the 30 quantities, it must be one, 103 actually. So make a search. You know. It will be coming. Then click on search now. It will be coming. So click on okay. And then click on okay, by which the lot has been recorded. Now we can submit. It will be very well submitting it. Click on submit. It will be going there. So the put away transaction is now completed. Fine. Right? Not done. So if you go and then have a look at the quantity, the quantity would have come from, from the receiving. What happens if you go there? Click on it. When the receiving, it will be coming the on end. You go there, click on it. Search for it. So click on search. Everything would have got shifted to on end. And then now the staging sub in the SFSI has come. Previously, SFSI was not there. So it is the destination sub inventory which is now asking for the material. And then so inter this facility of manual transfer order is not possible. If the transfer order is equivalent to IR, ISO of EBS basically. And there is no possibility of any uh, such thing actually. Here we can manually request. And then it's strongly recommended to go for a manual transfer order instead of IRISO. IRISO is uh, known as IR TO infusion now, but uh, it is uh, along with the GOP license actually. Right? So uh, normally people don't go for it. Only when, when they will go for IR TO is what? When they want the approval from the management for a movement of material between two halls. You know, all the way. then only IRTO will come into picture where approvals are coming into picture. Otherwise, if normally when you want to move between uh, Madras to Bombay, <clears throat> then you don't need any real approval actually, fine, because it's your own material. And if a company insists upon, then only you have to set up IRTO. And then as of now, uh, you need what a yeah, GOP license funds. In the global order promising license is not there, it will not be possible for it to set up at all. Right? So there is a requirement for it, IRTO. And then 
the manual transfer order will now definitely help you out in doing each and everything. So we can allocate the material. There is the power of a manual transfer order. So that way, you yeah, allocate it and then bring it in this place. And then it was intermediately, it was in staging sub inventory. I have not shown that staging actually. Uh, it will be in the staging sub inventory. And then afterwards, once when you perform what? Uh, ship confirmation. After picking, it will be uh, uh, shifted to staging, and then from staging upon shipping ship confirmation, it will now go away. It will now, uh, upon sell ship on advice, it will now vanish from this place, and then you have to perform a result on that destination. Only when you receive it, what happens? The SFSA will be getting public. So this way it works up. I hope that uh, this has now given you a lot of information on the inter sub inventory transfer order, ISTO. And then we will now meet on some other one, and then we will now go ahead on this one. Bye for now.